PM Foxy Rand, welcome to the Pan Asian Doctrine unit tier list. As you know, each doctrine gets different advantages and different unit bonuses. So if you want to rank their units, it is very important to take this in account. Hence why I rank each doctrine differently to the Pan Asian. The Pan Asian Doctrine is all about surprise, as their units move 20% faster, which is a very huge advantage. Also, they have an extra view range of 30%, and they get a 20% additional terrain bonuses on top of the existing ones. This is a very very powerful doctrine man, but this is a doctrine for players who are already a bit experienced on Call of War, they use the right counter units, they know how to use terrain bonuses in their advantage, and you need to be active enough to be able to exploit the speed buff. Of course, Pan Asian also has a nerf, your units have 10% less HP. So for example, if you encounter Axis units, be very careful, because they have a 15% HP buff, and so you have 25% less HP. If you want to fight axes in melee battle, please do it in a terrain where you get additional terrain bonuses to soften up the blow. You shouldn't have any problems against allies as allies are 10% slower, you are 20% faster, that's a speed difference of 30%, that's a huge advantage. Compton versus Pan Asian is very balanced, Pan Asian has 10% less HP but Cometern deal 10% less damage so that's balanced. Their units are cheaper so they tend to have more units but you have more speed, more view range and additional terrain bonuses so this balances out very well. Before we get started let me explain to you the different tier lists. So we have S which is overpowered. Build these units to get an edge on your opponents. A very powerful and useful in almost all situations. No army should miss out on them. B very strong and useful units. C can be a solid choice but they have downsides. D has some niche uses. F completely useless. Alright, let's start with the infantry branch. The militia, I'm gonna rank them C just like the Cometern ones because they also get their unit bonuses but from their doctrine. Also their research is uh, one or two days sooner available so they're very similar to Cometern ones. The infantry, we're gonna rank them a B because Pan Asian infantry is really good. They get a 10% additional hit points which negates their uh, doctrine nerf and they get an additional 30% bonus in the forest. This gives Pan Asian infantry an extra edge over most infantry as they get 40% bonus in the mountains, 70% in the forest and 70% in cities. This is huge. So as a Pan Asian player you should definitely not hesitate to produce more infantry. Motorized infantry is fast but for Pan Asian well they're super fast so they are a solid choice but they have a few downsides as well that would be that they take a lot of damage from infantry have low HP however if you want speed this is gonna be like the fastest unit you can get mechanized infantry have better stats than motorized infantry the light armor they take less damage they don't get any additional bonuses for Pan Asian however you already have their doctrine bonuses which makes them a very dangerous unit however they kind of have the same role as armored cars which are very good for Pan Asian as well. So you could produce mechanized infantry if you have a lot of food excess but armored cars would be the better choice. Better troopers they have some niche uses but no additional bonuses for Pan Asian. I mean it's like all the other paratroopers. Either you use them to take out a capital or a nuclear plant or maybe taking out the critical airbase from which uh, planes are operating. But yeah other than that I don't really see use for paratroopers. Commandos can be a solid choice especially that they have the additional speed and the additional terrain bonuses that makes them quite dangerous compared to other doctrines. In the artillery branch we've got artillery which is absolutely a rock star so I'm gonna rate them A. They deal an additional 15% damage versus unarmored units which makes them a little bit more viable in the early game as this is mainly a unit that counters heavy armor but there is still heavy armor in the early game. You can produce then 10% cheaper which helps because artillery costs a lot of goods and their research is one or two days sooner available so you can easily upgrade them. With the speed buff Pan Asian artillery they move at 38 speed. Their track range of course is 50 however their view range is 54. So which is cool is that you don't really need a scout to see what kind of units you are attacking like with other doctrines. That's a huge help however you always should have a scout unit so that you can't get ambushed by stealth units. They also deal a decent damage 
damage 1.7 versus unarmored, 2 versus light armor and 2.7 versus heavy armor. An Asian anti-tank doesn't get any bonuses but with their increased speed, increased view and increased terrain bonuses they get very dangerous in the forest in the series. However with their reduced HP I wouldn't give them an A rating but yeah they're definitely somewhere in between. They're really good units for Pan Asian. Perfect to protect your uh, artillery, rocket artillery stacks. Also they're anti-air as they are fast and additional terrain bonuses that's always very good. Solid choice. SP artillery doesn't get any extra bonuses but combine that with the sheer speed from Pan Asian and the rather doctrine bonuses and this makes the SP artillery pretty dangerous. Personally I wouldn't use them as a Pan Asian player as I believe tank destroyers are more efficient to take care of heavy armor but but SP artillery could be a viable option. Then you've got SP anti-air. I'm gonna rank them C because as a downside their research upgrades are one to two days later available. With the combination of all their doctrine bonuses they're still a very good unit and in any case if you go SP artillery or SP rocket artillery or other motorized units you're gonna need SP anti-air for sure. Tank branch. The armored cars for Pan Asian are absolutely awesome over the top you get an additional 20% damage versus light armored units and the research upgrades are one to two days sooner available with the additional bonuses they deal 5.4 damage versus unarmored units you can combine that with a sheer speed of 66 and have a view range of 93 this is just incredible and then you still need to take an account that on the planes they get 70% bonus and Asian armored cars they deal 36 damage in attack 5.4 in defense they're absolutely a solid unit but once you start upgrading them at level 3 for example they're completely over the top they deal 11.7 versus unarmored targets in defense and they have a speed of 86 at level 5 which is their maximum they get 27.9 defensive damage versus unarmored targets and a speed of 114 with 77 hit points that's crazy man also the pan asian light tanks are just amazing they deal an additional 15 percent versus unarmored targets additional 15 percent versus a light armor targets and their research up rates are one to two days sooner available they deal 4.6 damage versus a light armored targets got a speed of 72 that's even six faster than armored cars they deal 3.1 versus an armor targets and 1.5 versus heavy armor at level 3 for light tanks things become ridiculous as well they deal 11.5 damage versus light armor speed of 89 and at their maximum level they deal 26.5 damage versus light armor 106 speed 77 hit points this is absolutely lethal if you stack armored cars and light tanks together as pan asian oh boy your enemy better have bombers or tank destroyers because nothing else is gonna stop that stack man. Pan Asian medium tanks don't get any bonuses but you still have the additional terrain bonus of 20% on the planes of course and their sheer speed so there's definitely some competition. The heavy tank for Pan Asian they get their upgrades two days later but the biggest problem with heavy tanks is their speed of course but as Pan Asian is 20% faster I should actually put these heavy tanks on a C rating can be a solid choice but have downsides the research might be later available but with their sheer speed I would be aware of a, a Pan Asian player who goes heavy tanks man Pan Asian tank destroyers get unfortunately a nerf their uh, day later available compared to other doctrines and their research up rates are later available as well but with their sheer speed and extra terrain bonuses and their stealth they are the perfect unit to counter tanks from Comitern and Axis, you should really really have tank destroyers as a Pan Asian. It is simple as that. Pan Asian interceptors are absolutely over the top with their sheer speed, their bigger patrol circle, 15% additional view range, 15% extra damage versus planes and their upgrades sooner available than other doctrines they make them absolutely lethal. They, they deal the same amount of damage as Axis interceptors. Be aware of this. However, you've got 25% HP less. But now here comes the trick. You've got a bigger range than Axis. So 
you need to attack the Axis Interceptors when they're refueling, when they have only 25% health. Just a small tip for you guys, this is how you gain dominance over Axis players. You give them a juicy target that a plane's attack on direct attack and then you hit them when they refuel. When Asian Tactical Bombers don't get any bonus but a very solid unit due to their speed, same counts for the attack bombers. Heck, the same counts for the strategical bombers. I will be very aware from uh, an Asian uh, strategical bombers as they are 20% faster. If you think allies can take down your economy fast, be aware of Pan Asian man because they're 30% faster. Pan Asian naval bombers are absolutely lethal. They deal 15% initial damage versus ships, 15% additional damage versus submarines. Their upgrades are 1 to 2 days sooner available combined with all their doctrine bonuses. Be aware of naval bombers man. In the naval tab submarines don't get any bonuses however due to their speed and their bigger view range all naval units from the Pan Asian doctrine are able to ambush units and if they are in the disadvantage to run away. So this is very powerful which makes the Pan Asian navy really good. Also the Pan Asian destroyers I'm gonna rank them C. They have less HP, they have no uh, doctrine bonuses but just their speed and their view range changes a lot. Their cruisers they don't get any bonuses neither but they are a ranged unit and just due to their speed they can shoot and scoot and definitely no units will be able to get away. If you're in the advantage you're gonna annihilate your enemy that's for sure. If you're in the disadvantage Panasian cruisers are so fast you're gonna have no trouble sailing away. On top of that Panasian cruisers they get their research upgrades one to two days earlier than any other doctrine. Only Comet 10 also get the earlier doctrine advantage but Comet 10 cruisers simply cannot compete with those of Panasian. Battleships are absolutely the Arabian racehorse of Panasian. They deal 10% additional damage versus all units and they have 10% additional hit points which negates their doctrine nerf. Also their research becomes available sooner. This makes the Panasian battleship absolute rock stars. They only need to be careful for Axis battleships as Axis battleships deal 5% more damage than the Panasian one and they've got 15% more HP. But as Panasian battleships are faster, have a larger view range, you cannot get ambushed and if you're in disadvantage you can just sail away without any problem. This makes Panasian battleships really powerful. The Panasian battleships deals 8.3 hit points versus ships. They have a speed of 66 that's the same speed as an armored car. They have a range of 75 like all battleships. However they have a view range of 78. Other battleships they cannot see what they attack. But with the additional view range of Panasian they actually can. They also have 50 hit points so that's pretty good. And on top of that they deal 3.3 hit points versus all land units. So if you like playing with navy, Pan Asian really should be your doctrine. Pan Asian has the best aircraft carriers in the game. Just like allies you unlock your research one or two days earlier but on top of that you can produce aircraft carriers 20% faster and hold on you get one additional space for a plane. Normally per level you've got two planes However, Pan Asians they can carry three planes per level. So level one, three planes, level two, six planes, level three, nine planes, level four, twelve planes. So with four level one aircraft carriers, you can carry twelve planes. Whereas other doctrines to carry twelve planes, they need six aircraft carriers. Just due to this extra capacity you save 50% of the resources to produce them. That's crazy man. I hesitated to rank them 8 tier but I'm not gonna do that because Axis aircraft carriers they well they've got 15% extra health. Pan Asian aircraft carriers have 10% less health so that's a difference of 25 doesn't merit uh, a rating in my opinion. But yeah Pan Asian Navy pretty good man. Rocket artillery is a very powerful unit in the early game. Combine that with a 20% additional terrain bonus. This makes Pan Asian rocket artillery very dangerous in the hills and in the mountains. On top of that they are fast, bigger view range. This makes Pan Asian rocket artillery very dangerous. Especially in the early game where most units are unarmored. Rocket artillery is a must have for any Pan Asian army. SP rocket artillery I'm gonna give them 
them a B ranking. They are very useful in the mid game to counter unarmored targets of which there are a lot in the game and they are also pretty decent versus light armored targets. They are fast so they are perfect to be stacked with armored cars and light tanks and then you just set them free, annihilate the enemy with a shoot and scoot tactics. The Panasian railroad guns they can be a solid choice just due to their speed. They are faster of course. They have a shorter range than access railroad guns however with the speed you can actually get into range with Panasian railroad guns as well however beware as access railroad guns get a 10% additional speed you only are 10% faster but access railroad guns have a range that is 10% bigger and they have 25% more HP so Railroad guns can be viable strategy for Panasian, however, be aware of Axis man. And if you engage with the Axis railroad guns, make sure you have the numerical advantage. Flying bombs, in my opinion, they're a waste of resources, however, they can be useful maybe in the early game to take out buildings as it costs less to produce flying bombs than it is for your enemy to repair his buildings. However, be aware they can get shot down, they're very vulnerable. Rockets are a bit better, but then again, they're more expensive than flying bombs. And just like flying bombs, they can't attack moving targets, they're mainly used to attack buildings. They're single use, so that's a very big advantage. Rocket fighters, I'm gonna give them an A rating. I wanted to give them an S rating, overpowered due to their sheer speed, but as they don't get any doctrine bonuses and they have 10% less HP, I haven't done so because they cannot compete with Axis rocket fighters but still it is a solid unit for any Panasian player who risks losing air dominance with his interceptors. So to conclude, armored cars and light tanks make a perfect marriage, you can protect them with interceptors, naval bombers are overpowered, very good to protect your coastline, artillery and rocket artillery are a solid choice. Just take out those enemies by shooting and scooting. You've got those additional terrain bonuses, additional speed. You're gonna be the king of the hill. Battleships are the artillery of the seas. Absolutely amazing. Rocket fighters, you can always use them as a joker card if you risk losing air dominance. Very strong and useful units for Panasian or infantry, mechanized infantry, anti-tank, anti-air, SP rocket artillery, tank destroyers, tactical bombers, attack bombers, strategic strategical bombers, cruisers, aircraft carriers and SP rocket artillery. Solid choice but has some downsides, militia, motorized infantry, commandos, SP anti-air, medium tank, a heavy tank, submarine, destroyer, railroad guns, has some niche uses, paratroopers, completely useless, flying bomb and rockets. This was it for this one, if you disagree please let me know in the comments. I hope you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications. I want to say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel.